as the fourth-ranked Cornhuskers defend their home turf. Iowa State and Nebraska get physical. In the nightcap, the Ducks on Sportsnet. Nebraska has always been a time to celebrate. In recent years, homecoming and court Husker victories have been synonymous. And the Husker faithful are hoping that tradition continues tonight. For the 231st consecutive time, a sellout crowd has come to see their beloved Cornhuskers as tonight the number four Nebraska Cornhuskers meet the upstarts of the Big 12 Conference, the Cyclones of Iowa State. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thulin, joined once again by Artie Gigantino. And much has been written about the Nebraska defense, but this is by far their stiffest test of the 1999 season because Iowa State presents so many different looks, but they still have that one big weapon on offense. And that one big weapon, Ron, is number 28, Darren Davis. Coming into the game, he's the nation's leading rusher. This guy is tough to bring down in the open field. He can make you miss one-on-one, -on -one, but I think his best quality as a running back is the fact that when a tackler comes up to him, he speaks out of his tacklers. He is going to give the black shirts all they can handle tonight. Well, on the other side of the football, since Nebraska established a true number one quarterback with Eric Crouch, they've really opened up the playbook. Now, but former uh, starting quarterback Bobby Newcomb, he's given them a completely different weapon. And look for him to line up at the wingback position or the split end position. In fact, coming into the game tonight, he's only caught two passes, but look for him to be a huge part of this game plan tonight with screens as well as reverses. Eric Crouch has scored eight touchdowns. He is clearly the leader of this Nebraska offense. To me, he does a brilliant job of engineering and calling audibles at the line of scrimmage of this complex option attack. Well, homecoming history says Iowa State will have their hands full tonight as Nebraska has won 30 consecutive homecoming games. In fact, Iowa State hasn't won here in Lincoln since 1977. The nation's leading rusher, Darren Davis, is ready. Nebraska's Carlos Polk wants to stop him. All on Saturday in Lincoln, Nebraska is more than a game. It's a culinary delight able to please even the most discerning palate. A plethora of gastronomical delights are available. The finest in stadium sirloins, better known as hot dogs, burgers, and the Huskers are ready to come out. They present a major obstacle for Iowa State tonight. Along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin, 78,000 on hand at Memorial Stadium. Iowa State has their hands full, but they do have some weapons. The third member of our broadcast team, Eric Clemens, is on the sideline. Eric? All right, Ron, Iowa State on the other side of the field. We already talked about their success in the ground game, but they know to a man that Nebraska will be the toughest defense they've faced so far. They expect the black shirts to take some measures to shut down Darren Davis early on. What the Cyclones have to do in response is to come up with some big plays in the passing game. Now, their top three wide receivers average about 23 yards every time they touch the football, but their big play guy so far this season has been J.J. Moses. Look for him in motion a lot and to run and catch the football. Also so look for us to keep a chart on how many plays of 20 yards or more the Cyclones make in the passing game. Coach Dan McCartney says they'll need more than a few to have a chance tonight. Ron? You're absolutely right, Eric. In fact, Artie Gigantino, uh, Dan McCartney, told us last night he wants to make this a 15-round fight. He said, we've been knocked out in the first or second round so far in the last couple of years in his game plan. And he wants some early success, either stop Nebraska's offense, get a turnover, score. He's also got to have his football team handle any adversity that might take place. And lastly, he's got to play 60 minutes of football. And for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, their head coach, Frank Solich, his game plan. Number one is to take care of the football. No turnovers is what Nebraska's been preaching all week. The second thing, the linebackers have got to do a great job tonight of filling their gaps because all Iowa State does is run reverses and cutbacks. And lastly, they got to dominate special teams. Nebraska is very good on special teams. Iowa State's had a lot of problems this year. It'll be interesting, the special teams matchup. Well, Iowa State showed great concern about their special teams last night in their walkthrough. Coach McCartney said they have been very inconsistent, to say the least. And we are just about set. J.J. Moses set to receive the opening kickoff, and it's a boomer. Moses 10 yards deep, and he's not going to part that offense. 
But Iowa State will begin first and 10 from their own 20. Iowa State number one rushing offense in the NCAA, led by quarterback Sage Rosenfeld. He is a very sound quarterback, completes better than 55% of his passes. The coaches don't want him to play Superman tonight. They just want him to play the offense, stay within their game plan. And this Nebraska defense is a tough challenge for Dan McCartney's offense. Dan McCartney, though, has done a great job this week of mentally preparing his football team for this environment. Three wide receivers to the right with Chris Anthony, the farthest one out. Nebraska showing five men on the line of scrimmage. Now they move up six. They keep it on the ground with Darren Davis straight ahead. Picks up maybe five on the play. Let's take a look at that Iowa State offensive line. They're led by Bill Marsaw at left tackle. He is one of the five original recruits of Dan McCartney left on this team. In fact, he was one of the first recruits for Dan. And at wide receiver, keep an eye on junior Chris Anthony. He led the team in receptions last year. Only has three in 1999. He needs to step up tonight against this Iowa or this Nebraska secondary. Second down, we'll call it five. Ball on the 25-yard line. Mike Banks in motion. On the option, Rosenfels to Davis. He'll have the first down as he makes his way up to the 35-yard line. A pickup of 10 for the nation's leading rusher. And then Nebraska defense, number four total defense in the NCAA, number six against the rush. They're led by nose tackle Steve Warren, tied for the team in sacks. He's a senior out of Springfield, Missouri, the linebacker spot. The junior out of Rockford, Illinois, Carlos Pope, leads the team and tackles for a loss. Out of the secondary, Mike Brown will be manning that rover position once again. He is their leading tackler, and he is also their best tackler. First and 10 for Iowa State. Two plays, 15 yards. Rosenfels will now try from the shotgun. Moses in motion. Rosenfels putting his first pass up, and he's overthrown. Intended for number 86, Chris Anthony, the junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa. One of the things that Iowa State does on offense so well is a lot of misdirection. They're going to fake a back into the line of scrimmage, fake a reverse, do a lot of bootlegs, do a lot of play action type passes. When you look at Sage Rosenfelds, you say, hey, wow, can he handle the football? He is a master of deception with the football and his ball handling. He is a very exceptional athlete, probably one of the true superstars in Iowa high school history. Moses again in motion. A little razzle-dazzle reverse to Michael Brantley looking for a block as he gets up to the 40, and that is where he is dragged down. Carlos Polk coming from that middle linebacker spot to make the stop. And you have to think, Artie, this is the kind of game where Dan McCartney has to take everything from the cupboard, go ahead and throw it out on the field. And a lot of from the cupboard should be misdirection to try to fool this great speed team of Nebraska on defense. And you just saw Polk run from inside out. He, that's an indication of the great speed of Nebraska's defense. Dan McCartney is fired up for this game, and misdirection's a big part of his package tonight. 78,000, very loud. Third down and five for the Cyclones. The misdirection again. Rosenfels looks to throw it out on the flat. Penalty flag is thrown. Pass was intended for Mike Banks, the tight end. It may be holding against Iowa State. It was thrown in the backfield. Our referee tonight, Hal Dowden. It is against Nebraska. Personal foul. Tony Ortiz, number 37, and Kyle Vandenbosch, number 83, both hit Rosenfeld as he threw the football. You know, this is something Frank Solich was very concerned about. Penalties. They didn't have a turnover last week against Oklahoma State. Personal foul against the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. But even in practice, Artie, when you and I were here on Thursday, they bring officials in. They're dressed in full regalia. They throw the penalty flags. He said, we're doing everything we can to stop the penalty. Yeah, and it's been a killer for Frank because he's had 35 so far this year for 325 yards. But I've always said, Ron, and we've talked about this, it's not the penalty, it's when it occurs. And it's a killer for your football team when a personal foul calls is called on third down and five and you've stopped them. So I think that's what Frank Solich is angry about in reference to penalties. Well, they were the least penalized team in the conference last year, and that might be the reverse in 1999. First and 10, ball on the Nebraska 45-yard line, opening drive of the ball game. Played just about two minutes. 
You'll see a lot of people in motion. Rosenfels tucks it, keeps it to the 30, to the 20, down to the 19-yard line. Pickup of 26 on the play from the junior from Iowa. You know, he did this in the first game of the year, and it went for a 52-yard touchdown. This was good for 26. And he is averaging almost six yards per carry. Now, watch him right here. He's going to drop back, and he's going to take off right up into that alley there. He does a good job of looking down the field, but you know what? Look at these people right here blocking. That is a called play. That was a quarterback draw. That was not a scramble. And the black shirts, courtesy of the penalty, beginning to bend a little bit. First and 10 on the 19, in the red zone. Nothing doing for Darren Davis. Kyle Vandenbosch, who missed the Oklahoma State game because of an ankle injury, looking back in true form tonight. Sophomore out of Larchwood, Iowa. And that sophomore is arguably the best defensive end on this Nebraska team, and the coaches think he is the next great defensive end here for the University of Nebraska. You know, <laughs> Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, calls him the mad German who never <laughs> smiles. Well, look at a picture. I know, he plays <laughs> really hard. You gotta love guys like him. He's got a WWF look about him, doesn't he? Second down and 11 after the loss of one. Rosenfels on the option, Davis. Plants the foot, able to make a little lemonade out of some lemons, and we have a penalty flag thrown at the 22-yard line. Darren Davis in the open field can cut back on a dime. And that's exactly what he did that time in front of two Nebraska defenders. But all for naught because of a holding penalty. You know, he was telling us last night this new synthetic surface here on Tom Osborne Field and Memorial Stadium. He didn't like it. He said it doesn't give enough for him. Yeah, he'll like it if he gets 200 yards tonight. Oh, yeah. You know, if he gets about 50 down. yards foul. Uh, still second down. Well, it'll still be second down, but Dan McCartney's team picks up their first penalty of the evening. You know, McCartney, when he took over this job, he told us four years ago that his friends told him, you're committing coaching suicide, but he believed in his plan, his players and his coaches, and he's made that effort every year and has improved where he's competitive. And his administration believed in him because he's been here for four years, now his fifth year. They've been patient at Iowa State. On second and 23, they give it to Davis. Has a little bit of room. Inside the 30, down to the 28 before Carlos Polk comes up with his second tackle of the evening. Bring up a big third down play, which opponents of Nebraska have not tasted much success. And you can see what Darren Davis did briefly the first few games of the year. He is trying to become the first Iowa State running back to have 1,000 yards in three consecutive years. His big brother Troy didn't even do that. You were talking about third downs. Coming into the game, Iowa State was 46% successful on third down attempts. That's almost half, which is an excellent percentage. Well, Sage Rosenfels is going to do the smart thing, call a timeout. Didn't like what he saw in that Nebraska defense, and he's going to come over and talk to Pete Hayner, the offensive coordinator, and Dan McCartney. And we'll step aside, 10.37 left to play in the opening quarter. We are scoreless in Lincoln. People inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan, driven. We are in the capital of Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. That is the state capital. We are scoreless in the first. Just about three and a half minutes gone by, along with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thulin. You see the black shirts trying to bend but not break. First possession of the ball game for Iowa State. And they are facing a third down and 19 from the 28-yard line. Nebraska's got their nickel back, Joe Walker, number 25, in the game. He's at the top of the screen. Brantley in motion. Penalty flag, everybody jumping around on the line of scrimmage. Now, what happened that time is Nebraska lined up in their nickel defense and was coming with the blitz. And that's what caused Iowa State to delay a little bit on offense. Right of the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards coming. Still third down. Now that doesn't help Dan. Gets the crowd going and gets the crowd back into the game because they got a little quiet on that long quarterback draw. Rosenfels picked up 26 on that play, but since then they've been going backwards. A nice run by Darren Davis, offset by a penalty, and then a couple of penalties, and now they're looking at third and 24. Davis behind Rosenfels. 
Nebraska's just going to play a normal defense here. It's nickel, but I don't believe they're going to blitz. They're just going to cover. This is the tenth play of the opening drive. Nebraska bringing seven. Rosenfels drops the football, and he is down at the 37-yard line. And it'll be Nebraska's ball. Joe Walker came up with it. I was wrong. Walker came off the corner like he did the play before and just does an excellent job of knocking the ball out of the quarterback's hands from the backside. Rosenfels never had a chance to see number 25, Joe Walker, the junior sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, the junior out of Arlington, Texas. Boy, is he a good player. Boy, he is they play a lot of nickel at Nebraska, nickel defense, because he should be a starter. And they can't get him on the field unless they go to nickel. And Eric Crouch, the starting quarterback. 6-1, the sophomore out of Omaha. He is the majoring running threat. This time straight up the middle with Dan Alexander, who had 110 yards versus Iowa State last year. Let's take a look at the rest of the Nebraska offense. This offense is really hitting their stride. Russ Polkstein at right guard. He is second in the team in pancake blocks. And Dan Alexander at eye back will also might play a little fullback tonight, and he'll share that eye back spot with Carell Buckhalder. And he had the big run just a moment ago. First and 10 for the Huskers. Ball right at midfield. The option. Crouch keeps it, pitches it out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Pick up a five. Eric Crouch, when he has that ability to run the football, he just caused the Iowa State defense so many problems. And they are number five in total defense, number two in the nation for pass efficiency. Nigel Tharp is at nose guard. He's going to replace the injured Ryan Harklaw. Big loss for the Cyclones. Dave Bershka, the senior from West Des Moines, anchors that middle linebacking spot. And A.T. Austin, the redshirt freshman, will be tested at the left cornerback position, replacing the injured Jamarcus Powers. So with Harklaw and Powers out, big boys in that Iowa State defense. Euler and Alexander in the I formation. They give it to Tyrone Euler, the redshirt freshman out of Battle Creek, Nebraska. Reggie Hayward on the stop. There's Joe Walker, number 25, had the fumble recovery. And you know, there were some rumors around this campus that he was going to play a little bit of offense, too, this year because of his skills as a running back. And I don't know if Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator, wants to give him up because he's so valuable to this defensive football team. Well, we were talking about Krause. He just means so much when you have a quarterback that's able to take the pounding that he takes as an option quarterback. He's their leading rusher on third and two. Straight ahead, Alexander gets hit hard, but he still rambles his way across the 40 down to the 39-yard line. That's why you like a six-foot, 245-pound tailback, because tacklers, would-be tacklers, bop right off of them. Got a pretty good block from the fullback on this play. Yeah, Tyrone Euler, number 35, does a great job of taking the linebacker and knocking him inside, which opens the hole for Alexander to get up inside. When you look at Alexander, though, he doesn't look like a tailback. He looks right. like a fullback or a linebacker. And he may see some time at that fullback spot. Crouch will put it up for the first time, going deep, has a man, right corner of the end zone, tipped away at the last second, intended for Bobby Newcomb. Coverage was by A.T. Austin, the redshirt freshman. We thought he would be tested, and he was. Give him an A on the first test. Frank Solich is the play caller. He's opened up this offense by throwing the ball deep on first and 10. The ball is a little bit underthrown. Bobby Newcomb had to come back for the football, but A.T. Austin, I thought, made a great play of getting up in the air and knocking the ball away. But the ball was still a little bit underthrown. Second down and 10 for the Huskers. Austin out of Tarpon Springs, Florida, was a highly recruited running back. Straight ahead with the fullback Euler, penalty flag is thrown. You may want to mention history so far in 1999 says neither defense likes to give up a lot of points. In fact, Iowa State's defense has only given up one touchdown in the first half so far this year. Nebraska only 10 points in the first half this year. That's amazing. And again, Iowa State penalized. What the official told Coach McCartney was somebody on the far side lined up offside. That can happen, but defensive players have got to look to the inside. 
got to look to the inside and make sure you're lined up. I believe it's this guy right here, the left defensive end, up to the top, gets lined up off sides. It's number 91, Robert Bannon. Second down and five from the 33, closing in on eight minutes left here in the first quarter. Crouch will keep it, big hole, look out. Inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. A pickup of 26 yards for Eric Crouch. That is Eric Crouch's running ability and his heads up play. It's called the midline option. He fakes inside and the quarterback follows Dan Alexander, number 38, up inside. It's a new type of option play. Now watch what happens here with Crouch. Our telestrator's not working, but he's gonna fake up inside to the fullback, follow the guard, and follow the tailback up inside. That is called a quarterback midline option or quarterback isolation. The numbers on Crouch, seven rushing touchdowns so far. Keeps it again, looking for the corner, pitches, touchdown, Nebraska. Dan Alexander with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Alexander had his coming out party last year versus the Cyclones, and he gets Iowa State on the board with 8.02 left in the first. And for Dan McCartney, only the second touchdown given up in the first half this year. Vintage Nebraska offense now. Loosen you up a little bit with the pass and run the ball down the field. Josh Brown, the freshman out of Fayette, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa with the extra point. It is good. And Nebraska has struck first. Alexander scores 7-0 Huskers. the most impressive press box in all the college football, the new press box here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers have opened up a 7-0 lead on Iowa State in the first quarter. J.J. Moses set to receive the kick. And again, Hayden Felt drives it deep. Moses will take it from two yards deep. Right side, still on his feet. Penalty flag is thrown as he crosses the 20 up to the 23-yard line. Justin Smith on the tackle holding call however will go against Iowa State and again they're victimized by penalties already that has to frustrate Dan McCartney because your margin of error in Lincoln is so slim anyway absolutely and especially in a kicking game because you give up great field position holding on the return phase. after this it's go first down when you look at Eric Crouch you look at a young man who makes great decisions this time he follows his tailback up inside on the midline option and makes a great run. Now he's going to line up the triple stack guy here. He's going to run on the corner and he's going to make an outstanding decision by dishing the ball off to the tailback, Dan Alexander. When you look at Crouch, you say, hey, this guy is the engineer of this Nebraska option offense, and he does it so well. Davis, the lone setback. Two wide receivers to the left. Iowa State with her back to the wall and Rosenfels keep it after he couldn't hand off to Davis, who was hit immediately. For a Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it to our college football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier. Guys, well, I've been to one of those battles already in Knoxville and between the hedges in Athens. That is a great SEC matchup. Atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. College football, Lincoln, Nebraska, or Knoxville, Tennessee. It's all good. The black shirts flexing their muscles. A loss of five on the play. A.J. Moses in motion. They go straight up the middle. Another penalty flag is thrown. Aaron Wills from that left defensive end on the stop. And that's Wills' second play in a row in the backfield. Mm. And the Nebraska defensive line is just starting to tee off on the Iowa State offensive line. And what's happening, because they can't block them, they're starting to hold them. Boy, Iowa State has shot themselves in the foot Holy so far in the first quarter. The third down. Nebraska wants the field position and the football here. It's going to be third and long. Nebraska does a great job on third and long. Coming into the game, they had only given up 20 first downs out of 80 attempts on third down for 25%. So they know what they're doing on third down situations. You have 78,000 in the Memorial Stadium yelling and screaming. Difficult for the young quarterback, Sage Rosenfels, facing a third and 15. 
He'll tuck it, looks to run, has a little bit of room, but the red jerseys show their speed and collapse on him. Led by Mike Brown from that rover position, the senior out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Mike Brown sat in a rover robber position that time, read it perfectly. He was in the middle to help on some of the underneath patterns, but when the quarterback Rosenfeld started to scramble, he became a run defender, and it just hit him in the backfield. One of the great players in all college football, number 21, Mike Brown. And this is where Iowa State has their fingers crossed. And look for Nebraska to go after the punt here. They're not shy about trying to block punts. They blocked two already this year. And it is blocked. Make it three. Touchdown, Nebraska. Randy Stella with the block. And Ralph Brown with a recovery. When you have fast athletes on defense, you go after punts all the time. Randy Stella, number 34, is a 4-4 speed demon. Watch him from the left of the screen. He lays out, he fell, he got up, and he took the ball off the punter's foot. You don't get any better of an example of a great play in blocking a punt than number 34, Randy Stella. And Nebraska has hung 13 already on Iowa State, make it 14. Josh Brown completes it, the block punt, the touchdown by Brown, and the Huskers up by two touchdowns. We'll be back. That young person has probably been born into tickets here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he loves it. The Huskers lead 14 to nothing as Iowa State has their first punt block of the year. Aiden Feltz kick again. Gets that strong leg into it, five yards deep. Moses will take a knee. We talked about handling adversity. This is what Iowa State has to handle right now. Number 34, Randy Stella is right here. He gets off on the football and does a great effort of coming up the field. But watch his athleticism. He almost gets knocked down, but he keeps coming because of his determination to get to the punter, and he blocks the punt. What a great job. This guy is a former running back out of Omaha. He plays linebacker. He returns kicks. He covers kicks. He is going to be a great, great player here for the corner. Well, already Iowa State going to a new quarterback. Derek Walker, the junior out of Brenham, Texas, is really starting to come on. They like his style on the option, and we'll see it on the first play. But the black shirts have something to say about that. No gain on the play. Iowa State had only 10 turnovers coming into this game. They already have two tonight. The numbers on Walker. Spent some time in junior college. Didn't play a lot of quarterback in junior college, but Dan McCartney told us a couple weeks ago, this guy is an athlete. Yeah, he's only thrown four passes, though, so far this year, and this is a tough situation for him to come into. I think they're putting him in here to give Rosenfels a little bit of a break, but also to allow Walker's athleticism to hopefully make some plays. Second down and 10. Again, the motion. Walker does not have anybody available. And he is going to be dumped by Carlos Polk after a gain of about two. That is why the black shirts are such a great defense. Their linebackers close so quickly. But when you talk to the Larry Smith of Missouri, who obviously has played him, Bob Simmons, he said what makes the linebackers so good are guys like Kaiser and Warren, the two guys right in the middle on the defensive line. Yeah, I'd give the credit to, to Charlie McBride, though, on that one, because he blitzed a new quarterback out of a nickel, nickel package. And I'll tell you, it, obviously, Iowa State wasn't ready for it. Your point is well taken, though, Ron. Kaiser and Warren and Lar, those defensive front guys are as good a group as there is in the country. And they're missing Jeremy Schlechter, who they think may have tore his ACL. They're hoping he might come back later on this year, and the young Walker is going to have to call a timeout. How would you like to be playing junior college ball in the next year? You're in front of almost 80,000 people dressed in red. Well, I'm sure Blinn Junior College averaged about, what, 8,000 a game <laughs> if instead that. of 80? But, you know, this is what Dan McCartney was talking about, about handling adversity. Right now, Iowa State is suffering some adversity. They're behind 14-0. They're not playing very good. And the crowd is obviously against them. So they've got to be able to handle this to stay in this game. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, it's the NFL this morning, this week's special guest. Nebraska, 23 years, 18 as the defensive coordinator, a throwback 
But I'll tell you, he's got them lined up in the right spots all the time. Does a great, great job of coaching this Cornhusker black shirt defense. He thinks this could be one of his best defenses ever. And I, I, ever. I agree with him. On third down and eight, Walker puts up his first pass of the evening, and it is complete to Ennis Haywood out of the backfield, the sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. And they mark it. It will be good enough for a first down as it was a pickup of 10. And that will relax Walker a little bit. You want to get your first completion, the rhythm of the game. There's no way sitting on the sidelines can you experience it. And they thought that he would have the poise to handle something like this. The coaches didn't question that uh, beginning in the, in the practices when he first started two a days, and they saw that he had some of those intangibles. Well, you know, and you know what happened a little bit? Rosenfels has played so well that you don't want to break off a good thing when things are going well. Dan McCartney says he doesn't want to be the punching bag anymore in the Big 12. Right now, Nebraska is taking a couple of right hooks upside their head, and Iowa State has to answer. Nebraska's in their nickel defense again. They fake the reverse, keep it straight ahead. The number one rushing team in the NCAA is stopped. Darren Davis, no place to go. Yes. And there is Sage Rosenfels just having to wait. And, you know, he's got to be a team guy in this situation like this. He and Walker live in the same apartment complex back in, you know, at, at Iowa State University. So he's got to hang in there. He's got to look what's going on and be ready to go back in if the coaches decide to take out Walker, which I'm sure he will. Ricky, or Darren Davis, five carries, 18 yards so far, and you can see how much their rushing has improved the last three years. That's an amazing statistic to go from 103rd in the country two years ago to first. Amazing job. Second and nine, three-step drop. Walker over the middle. Pass is tipped away at the last second. Ralph Brown on the coverage, and he holds every record in Nebraska history for pass breakups, and we saw a perfect example of that right there. Going to be an All-American at Hacienda Heights, California, Bishop Ahmad High School. Wanted to go to USC along with Mike Brown, but decided to go to Nebraska when they came here on a recruiting visit. This guy and Mike Brown and this entire Nebraska secondary is arguably the best in all of college football. He looks like B.J. Armstrong, former NBA or NBA player, now back at the Chicago Bulls. Looks I tell you, he, like lo him. he looks like an All-American in a first-round draft choice yeah. to me and a future millionaire. Third down and nine for Iowa State. They'll keep it on the ground with Davis. Penalty flag is thrown. Davis bullying his way up to the 38-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Wills and Pope combine to make the tackle. And again, and Wills, another penalty, penalty against Iowa State. They average only seven penalties a game. And Dan McCartney has, I think, five penalties already tonight. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now they'll have to kick it away. You know, we talked about it before, but sometimes when the defensive players are very athletic, offensive linemen get nervous, and they, they say, hey, I need an edge here, so I've got to use my hands and hold a little bit. And I think that's what's happening a little bit here tonight. And Nebraska, Ron, doesn't look like they're coming after this punt. They're back. It looks like they're going to be in a return mode. Carl Gomez set to kick it away. Bobby Newcomb. Back at the 22-yard line, ready to return the punt. Nebraska dancing around on the line of scrimmage. And they just changed. They're going to come after him. Life tog of the snapper, the left-footed kicker. Not a very good kick, and it won't be returned. Newcomb just backs away as the punt dies at the 18-yard line. 44 yards on the kick, so they got a pretty good bounce. So that's an interesting hat. Well, coming up. And Nebraska first to 10 from their own 18-yard line. Eric Crouch goes to work straight up the middle of big hole. Again, it is Alexander. Or Buckhalder, we should say. Correll Buckhalder getting a little playing time. But again, that offensive line of Nebraska opening up the big hole. They do as good a job as anybody at blocking inside. You're going to see number 55, Russ Holkstein there, pull trap, which allows Burkholder to get up inside. Good blocking, but look at that hole, Ron. You can run through there. I'm telling you. Buck Alder has the only 100-yard rushing game so far this year for Nebraska. Had it against Missouri. They'll try the right side. Big hole again. Buck Alder crossing the 45. They'll mark it at the 48-yard line. He comes into the game as the slasher-type runner. He 
He's averaged over seven yards a carry coming into the game tonight. Look for him to make some big runs. He's the fastest back that Nebraska has. And again, Iowa State commits the infraction. That'll be officially their fifth nice penalty. And this is a five-yard penalty. Man run. First down. Now, you know what was interesting about that last play? Number 38, Dan Alexander. You see him right there. He's the lead blocker. Look, he's the other tailback. He's blocking in the fullback position. Does a great job for Burkholder. Wow, you got to like that when you have two tailbacks, one at the fullback yeah. and one at the tailback or the eyeback position. The thing you have to do at Nebraska if you're a wide receiver or any kind of back is you have to learn to block. Nebraska mixing it up. Crowd's going for pay dirt. Matt Davison. Touchdown. <laughs> 47 yards on the pass completion. Davison's second touchdown reception of the year. Had one versus Missouri and one this evening. Frank Solich talked about mixing it up with play action type passes on first and ten the defense gets about nine guys around the line of scrimmage it's difficult to stop an efficient passing game with that many people around the line of scrimmage Josh Brown has the extra point it is good and Dan McCartney and Iowa State looking for a tourniquet to stop the bleeding 158 left in the first Nebraska leads 21 nothing like what they see so far they have won the last six meetings between these two teams 20 of the last 21 and they lead 21 nothing right now the kick into the end zone and again Hayden felt putting the Iowa State with their back to the wall let's take a look at that touchdown again Matt Davidson's the receiver up at the top you're gonna see a great play fake in the backfield and watch Dustin Avey right here at the safety he jumps on the play fake in the backfield and he doesn't help his corner at all Matt Davidson runs down the field runs a post and out and catches the touchdown pass perfectly thrown ball but the play fake is what makes it and that's why you do that Ron yep. on first and ten you want to suck up those safeties and those linebackers and throw the ball behind them. Well, Sage Rosenfels is back into the lineup. Derek Walker will take a seat. This possession is so important for Iowa State just to try to do something offensively. Davis will try the right side, and there's nothing doing as a penalty flag is thrown, and this will be another holding call against the Cyclones. Brian Shaw's the one who really strung the play out to the outside. Well, Artie, I tell you, if you're Dan McCartney, you've got to be scratching your head. You came in, you wanted to just play sound football. That's all he talked about, and he knows that this is just, a, you could call it a brain cramp, but this does not give your uh, team an opportunity to do anything. Holding on the offense, 10 yards penalty, repeat first down. Meanwhile, Davison reliving his scoring drive of three plays. Only took 45 seconds on the pass from Krauss, getting attaboys from Dan Alexander. Well, there's a lot of happy faces on that sideline. And one of the reasons is there's a lot of quick strikes and quick scores. The average scoring drive this year for Nebraska is 2 minutes and 15 seconds, which means you're scoring in a hurry. Well, first down and 20 ball on the 10 yard line. They better snap it. They have one second to do it. They barely get it off. Rosenfels throws it to no one in particular, and Nebraska is there to knock it away. Ralph Brown again intended for Mike Banks. The tough thing for Iowa State's offense is when you are in long situations. You're going to see Banks lined up out here in the slot. He's a tight end. He's going to fight to get off the ball. He's running down the field. He slips. The ball almost gets intercepted. But the problem here is it was first and 20, and the defensive linemen from Nebraska are playing pass. So they get their rear ends in the air, and they say, wow, I get to go rush the passer. Well, the last two times Iowa State has been in Lincoln, they've lost 73 to 14 and 77 to 14, and both of those games were over in the first quarter. Rosenfels 0 for 2, looking for his first completion, and it is bobbled. Brown on the coverage, intended for Damian Gross, the senior out of San Bernardino. There's Pete Hayner, the offensive coordinator, and he also coaches the offensive line. He's also got to be scratching his head right now. Iowa State sideline a little quiet. Eric Clemens, you're there. 
Well, actually quite vocal. A lot of the Iowa State coaches complaining to the officials to let the kids play. And of course, an inordinate amount of holding penalties from their perspective have been called against their offensive linemen. They're yelling to the officials down here, let our kids play. Let us have a chance to get something done. But I guess holding is holding, guys. Exactly right, Eric. 135 to play in the first. Nebraska leading by three touchdowns. A block punt accounts for one of them. Rosenfeld's on the option. The spacing was not all that good, and he is going to be dropped at the 10. Kyle Vandenbosch and Carlos Polk again. Vandenbosch played that perfectly. He's the 1999 Lifter of the Year here at the University of Nebraska. He's big, he's strong, he's tough, and he comes with a bad attitude. Watch him right here at the top of your screen. Does a great job of playing off the block, throws the blocker to the side, comes off, makes the tackle on the quarterback with help from number 13, Carlos Polk. That's good defense. Bunch of red shirts Absolutely. around the ball. Gomez standing in his own end zone. Joe Walker set to return this on the far side along with Bobby Newcomb. High snap, the left footed Gomez, a line drive kick. Taken by Newcomb. Gets away. Look out. That is the weapon we talked about at the open. 40 yard kick 26 yards on the return only a net 14 but Nebraska knocking on the door again. Bobby Newcomb can do it all. He can catch passes he can run and he can return punts. A lot of this effort here is because he's so athletic but he's got great great vision to see where to run with the football. I think it's been a great move for Nebraska to get Newcomb on the field as a split end and a wing back along with Eric Crouch as the quarterback. You have two of your better athletes maybe your two best athletes on the field at the same time. Straight ahead from the fullback position. And Alexander on the carry picks up a couple of yards. But Bobby Newcomb he wanted to make the switch from quarterback and a lot was made that you know oh Eric Crouch will transfer Bobby Newcomb will transfer. That young man said I want to do what's best for the team talk to his family and he knows he's doing what's best. But for he the also team. wanted to return punts. You know he loves to return punts. He did it for Tom Osborne when he was a freshman. And now he's a little more active in the game and you know we saw him the other day in the airport. He's got just a great attitude. Well, Matt Ward, the freshman out of Miami, Florida, is down, but that's the end of the quarter. As Nebraska comes up with the blocked punt. Stella with the block, Brown with a touchdown, and Nebraska with the lead. Welcome to college football. Welcome to college football. Fox Sports Net. And we are back in Nebraska. 21 nothing. The Huskers lead as quarter number two gets underway. Nebraska, second down and five. Ball on the 19. They keep it on the ground, trying the right side up to the 15 yard line. Terrell Buck called her on the carry. He gives them that elusiveness in that eye back position. And he also gives them the opportunity to put Alexander, number 38, at fullback. This is probably their best combination of players in the backfield. One of the reasons that Alexander is playing fullback, and you mentioned this before, is Willie Miller, their starting tail or mm -hmm. starting fullback, is injured with an ankle injury. You see Frank Solich open up this playbook. The past two games, they've doubled their offensive output of the first three games. And they're doing likewise tonight. Third down, they have just a yard for the first. Crouch keeps it and gets it. I think I think one of the things that's happened is they've gotten confidence now in Eric Crouch, who's done a good job not only of running the option, but throwing passes. Now look at number 54 right here, Dominic Royola, the future All-American center, does a wonderful job of pushing forward, which allows Crouch to follow him and get the first down. You look at this big Nebraska offensive line, 6'4", 300. These mm. guys come out of cookie cutters. That's some beef. They're all the same every year. Bunch of little tanks playing in the offensive line. Buck Calder and Alexander from the eye. Eric Crouch looks to keep it. Not much running room. Up to the 12-yard line. Maybe a pickup of yard before Dustin Avey, the junior out of Ames, Iowa, comes up from that free safety position. But you talk about those offensive linemen. They have a very interesting strategy here at Nebraska. They build them almost. The guys come in, 
They hit the weights, and usually you don't see a whole lot of sophomores like Rayola starting. Well, that's, the that's because it's complicated to learn this offensive system. And they worry about things called pancakes and, and no sacks allowed. A pancake is when you knock a defender down off of his feet to the ground. Rayola's got like 60 already this year. He leads the team on second and nine. This time the Iowa State defense stops him, but we have a penalty flag throw. Well, carried by Buckhalter. And it'll be holding going against Nebraska. Well, Dominic from Honolulu, Hawaii. Did a great job of previous play. This one uh, might not have gotten the Watch job. Watch him done. right here, number 54. At that time, he doesn't get the job done because what happens, he goes up the field, and the linebacker that he was supposed to block blitzes, and he falls down and slips. He doesn't block anybody. But look for him on your All-American teams in the future. He's going to start now for three years for Nebraska. He is, was one of the best high school players in all the country two years ago before he came to Nebraska out of Honolulu. In fact, some of the black shirts call him the Carlos Polk of the offense. Yeah, you know what he else also is? He's a surfer in his oh, spare man. time. And that's got to be the biggest surfer in the ocean. It's got to be the biggest surfboard in the ocean. I I'd like to see the size of that surfboard. Crops looks to put it up on second and 21 in the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. <laughs> Throwing the ball to Wilson Thomas, the big six foot five. Wide receiver. Now you look at Turner Gill. He's the quarterback coach, the ex quarterback here. He is involved in the play calling. He's done an excellent job of schooling the quarterbacks here at Nebraska. In fact, he was all in favor of moving Bobby Newcomb to the wing back split end position. Look for Turner Gill to become a head coach in the near future. You can see the average on third down. Nebraska has 13 to go usually. Nebraska eight right now. It's third down and 21. They need to get down to the three yard line. Crouch, deep drop. They're setting up a screen on the left side. And Iowa State's going to be all over that. They get away briefly, but Buck Alder is finally wrapped up. First hit was put on by Reggie Hayward, the junior out of Dalton, Illinois, number 15, the big 6 5 defensive end. You know, Ron, it's hard to call offensive plays when you're in second and 20s and second and 18s because no plays work in those situations because the defense knows what to expect. That time, Nebraska got a little bit out of their rhythm. And Frankie London will be the holder as Josh Brown will attempt a 42-yard field goal spotted at the 32-yard line, the left hash mark. Brown's kick. It's not going to be any good, and he didn't like it. A very personable young man spent some time with him on Thursday said he's still getting his feet on the ground former Chris Brown no relation has helped him but he can't get this one to split the uprights 1240 left in the half it has been all Nebraska for Frank Solich homecoming weekend in Lincoln Nebraska and so far everybody's had a lot to cheer about Nebraska leads 21 to nothing we're in the second quarter Eric Clemens started Gigantino I'm Ron Thulin glad you can spend your Saturday evening with us on a Beautiful fall evening here in Lincoln. Walker back into the lineup at quarterback, going deep. Pass is complete down to the 25 yard line to Damian Gross. Well, Walker showed the strength of his arm that time, Artie. Mike Brown, number 21, the strong safety was in coverage. You're going to see it down on the bottom here. Mike Brown is right here. Rosenfeld is going to go back and just put the ball up in the air. And, and Gross just runs away from Mike Brown. Mike Brown doesn't see the ball. It's, it's one man-to-man -to -man all the way, and Walker does a great job of getting the ball to his receiver. And that's what Iowa State's yeah. got to do, though. They're going to make some big plays here. Absolutely. Pick up a 50 on the play. Walker trying to scramble. They're going to grab him by the ankles, and it's Vanden Bosch again, and a penalty flag has been thrown. Boy, you have to think that's going to be another holding call against Iowa State. Boy, that hurts. You have the big play, and, and you start doing a little Michael Jackson moonwalk. Marcel Howard, the big right tackle, comes back into the lineup for Iowa State. Update on Matt Ward, by the way. He has a bruised right shoulder. His return is questionable for Iowa State. Now well, they're talking it over again to Nebraska. Coming into the game, Nebraska had given up seven passing plays this year of 25 yards or more. Holding, Holding. on the offense, 10-yard penalty. 
Repeat first down. Eric Clemens on the sideline with a little game summary, Eric. That's right, our national car rental game summary. Matt Davidson doing it through the air for Nebraska and a block punt, of course, recovered for a touchdown. Big swings there. One passing play you just saw over 20 yards, that 50 yard completion of Gross. Of course, Iowa State needs a lot more, guys. Absolutely. First and 20, ball on the 34 yard line for the Cyclones. Walker lets it fly, overthrown. Intended for J.J. Moses, who stands 5'6". That pass was about 6'5". One thing the Iowa State coaches are doing now is they're, they're allowing Walker to run the offense. They haven't done anything different with right. him than they wouldn't do with Rosenfeld. So, obviously, Walker has been getting good, solid practice time in executing this offense. Well, the Nebraska defense, the top six in four different categories, and only three times under Charlie McBride has it happened. That could be a former offensive lineman. Yeah, it? or a nose guard. He looks a little bit more like a nose guard to me. Second down and 20. The blitz coming from the right side. A little draw play. Davis maybe gets a yard or two. He has been wrapped up from the get-go. And a lot of times after the first hit, you can see Darren Davis do a little running. And that was Ennis Hayward, I should say. Jamie Burrow, number 48, makes the play. Now, Burrow's an interesting guy because he's from Ames, Iowa. So he knows a lot of these players that are playing for Iowa State. In fact, his dad, Jimmy, played for Nebraska in 74 and 75, is a good friend of Charlie McBride, and is now a high school coach up in Ames, Iowa. And he's in the stands somewhere here tonight rooting for his son, number 48, Jamie Burrow. Third down and 18. Walker rolling out, throws back to the left, almost a spectacular catch by Gross. But the pressure again put on Walker. Ralph Brown was on the cover, but Walker took a huge hit after he let that one go. And the guy we were just talking about, Jamie Burrow, number 48, is the guy who comes on a linebacker blitz and knocks him to the ground. But he doesn't fall on top, he doesn't go on the ground. But he doesn't not fall on top of him, which is why it was not a personal foul. The job that time by number 22, Ralph Brown. And a fourth down, Iowa State will go for it. Fourth down this year, they are two of four. I think they're smart here. Why run? Hey, show your team you have confidence in them and try to make a play. Fourth down and 18 from the 32. Pressure again. Looking for a screen. They've got it on the left side. The bank's penalty flag is thrown, and he is dropped at the 36-yard line, a loss of three. We have two penalty flags now thrown, one on the near side and one right in the middle of the field. So hold on. Linesman David Alexander coming over to talk to the referee Hal Dowden. Well, a personal foul against Iowa State. Looks like Julius Jackson may have the personal foul called on him for Nebraska. Now yeah, they're discussing the penalties. And they're going to talk to Nebraska captains. Yeah, well, what's going to happen here now, the personal foul is going to be a dead ball foul, and the, the holding is a live ball hold. Holding on the offense is declined. It was fourth down, so the ball goes over. We'll penalize the dead ball, personal foul against Nebraska. First down. All right. All, all you do is lose a little bit of field position, but you maintain the ball. Now watch number 50 right here. Julius Jackson. Uh, I don't know. Close. I don't know either. I agree. Unless it was somebody else or unless somebody said something to somebody, the official or something, but we didn't get it all there. And here comes the Nebraska offense leading 21-0. 10-42 to play in the opening half. They led 21-0 at the end of one. Diversity will describe this offense so far tonight. They've run it and they've thrown it. And you can see 145 total offense on 16 plays. Try to follow the right side of the big Nebraska offensive line. Not much doing. Good defensive stand by Iowa State as they're stopping Carell Buckhalter. 
That time, Bobby Newcomb came around in motion, and they faked the ball to him. Watch for the next play in this series to be a fake up inside to number 36, Buck Halter, and a give to Bobby Newcomb coming around as the wing back. It's a nice little series that really keeps the defense at home, so to speak. Well, there's a guy that might be a little colorblind. No, it's supposed to be red, not green, okay? It says Cornhuskers, though. Dude. <laughs> Crouch on the option. The pitch is good. Tiptoeing down the sidelines. Up to about the 28-yard line was Buck Alder again. Well, this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, it's hardcore football. And this week's guest is former Seattle Seahawks running back Kurt Warner, one of six players in the Seahawks Ring of Fame. All-time Penn State rushing leader with... Almost 4,000 rushing yards. It's Hardcore Football Tuesday at 8 on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. One of the great names, Kurt Warner. And speaking of Kurt Warner, has the second most rushing yards against this Nebraska defense. Billy Sims in his Heisman year of 1979 leads it with 247. That was down at Owen Field in Norman. The right side, running room again. Still on his feet. Buck Calder. Crosses the 40 up to the 43-yard line. A slasher, fast, tough, keeps his knees moving type of running back. The junior out of Collins, Mississippi, is going to end up being the starting tailback, the starting eye back here at the press. Listen to the sounds. Boy, he is a hard runner, too. This is a young man that almost left the team. And you know, he's six foot, 225, but when you see him at practice, he looks bigger. You know, he looks like yep. he's about 6'2, two, about 235. Play action pass. Crouch is being rushed, and he is going to be dropped at the 37 yard line. Coming in from the left side, Eric Weiford. Weiford's first sack of the ball game and the first sack for the Cyclone defense. That time, the Cyclone defense guessed right. They came after Nebraska on first down. Nebraska's running a play-action type pass. It's hard to protect play-action type passes when the defense is blitzing. Good call that time by the defensive coaches from Iowa State. It's only the fifth sack given up by that offensive line by Nebraska. Sets up a second and 16. Crouch looks to keep it, crosses the 40. Up to the 45-yard line, just past the original Crouch line the of scrimmage carrier. before Dustin Avey, the junior out of Ames, comes up with a stop. Crouch gets on the corner in a hurry. That's the key to this option offense, for the quarterback to get on the perimeter of the defense in a hurry. It really puts the defense in a bind. And that option gives this Nebraska offense such an opportunity to come up with a big play, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then you complement it by being able to throw the football, which is what they've done so well this year. In fact, Right now, coming into the game tonight, Crouch was the leading passer in the, in the Big 12 in terms of passing efficiency. On third and nine, two wide receivers to the right. Crouch looks to put it up. Sprints out into the flat, and the pass is overthrown intended for Matt Davison. The junior out of Tecumseh, Nebraska. 32 receptions last year, the most in serving Fryer did it in 1983. A crowd of over 77,000, the 231st consecutive sellout, have come to Tom Osborne Field Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, to see the number four ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers looking to move up to number three in the rankings as they lead Iowa State in the second, along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you could be with us. It was a wham bam first quarter as Nebraska jumped out to a 21 0 lead. Aiden Felt, good strong leg, standing at his 31 yard line. Almost blocked. He goes down and the penalty flag follows. The kick goes into the end zone, but let's see what the penalty is. It's roughing the punter by, by Iowa State. 55 yards on the kick. Almost got a piece of it. Hayward was coming in. Are you going to see Hayden Field get the ball? He kicks it. And Reggie Hayward, number 15, if he would have gotten a piece of it, then it would not have been a penalty. But because he didn't, it's a 15-yard penalty that enables uh, Nebraska to keep the football. Kevin Spacey should be smiling because that's the best acting since Mr. Spacey's latest movie. <laughs> nice job, Dan. He's got an actor. Yeah, but you know what? He? Being an old special teams coach, that's what you teach the yeah, punter. Absolutely. You teach him if anybody comes <laughs> near you, you go down. 
That says it all. Josh Brown getting a little laugh out of it, and Hayden Felt with those Hollywood looks. And, you know, he's saying, hey, I got away with something. But, you know, Iowa State with eight penalties, the problem's not the number of penalties. The problem is when they have occurred. And they've occurred a lot. And you can see right here, Aircroft is calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. Straight ahead with Dan Alexander. Not much running room. The Iowa State defense, to their credit, the last couple of possessions already but have done a nice job. Yeah, but what you don't want to have happen now if you're Dan McCartney is you don't want to be on the field the whole time because this is where Nebraska begins to wear you down when you're on the field. Dan McCartney's played against Nebraska before. Mm -hmm. He's coached at Iowa. He's coached at Wisconsin. He knows how hard it is to come in here to Memorial Stadium and win and play good and play respectable football. Says it's the most difficult atmosphere in college football to play. Crouch on the option, keeps it. Lunges forward up to the 32-yard line. Will be about two yards short of the first down. You know, I was talking to ex-Nebraska quarterback David Hump, who played at the Oakland Raiders and played for the Baltimore Colts for a while the other day, about Eric Crouch. And he watches all the games. He knows something about the quarterback position. But he thinks this guy can end up being as good as any quarterback that Nebraska has ever had, including himself. Of course, he was only joking yeah. about that. But, you know, that, that, that's pretty high praise from an ex-Nebraska quarterback. And most time will tell, but so far he's on the right track. Third down, we'll call it just about three. Straight ahead, the Iowa State defense is there for the stuff. Great job by the Cyclone defense, led by Robert Brannon, the senior out of Rialto, California. Young man who didn't even play high school football. Said the coaches would look at him, and he looked the other way. Wanted to play hoops. You know, they've gotten better defensively, obviously, in, in pass defense and in total defense. But one of the reasons is guys like a Robert Brandon, number Bannon, number 91. And Bannon was from San Bernardino Junior College, and he was standing on line registering for a class. And one of the linebacker coaches was walking by him and said, hey, would you like to come out for football? Which is why he joined the football team and ended up getting a scholarship here to Iowa State. Now you saw Nebraska's success rate on fourth down. Crouch keeps it, lunges over the 30, and he should have enough for the first down. That second effort again, Jeff Waters tried to hold on, the senior out of Carson, California, number 17, and push him back, but Crouch showed a little bit of strength. That's why a lot of people compare him more to a running back than a quarterback. The crowd's booing because the spot made it even closer. They put it right on the 30-yard line, but that's still good enough for the first down. Saw Nebraska with 10 first downs, Iowa State with just five. Boy, Dan Alexander just gets knocked down, boy, at the line of scrimmage there. He's got to get his head up. Ab Turner, number 41, a linebacker from Iowa State, just knocked him down. Good linebacker play. Crouch looking down the middle, has a receiver, and it's almost picked off. Great defensive play by Ryan Sloth, the junior out of Belmont, Iowa, taking the place of Breon Ansley, who was hurt in pregame warm-ups on that right cornerback spot. Great job by the youngster. Sees the ball being thrown, comes across, makes a break on the ball without hitting the receiver. That's, oh, that's, a, that's a stout play. Stout play. Excellent camera work, and it really shows what a nice move on the ball by Slough. Talking about Ainsley, right before the game, he ran into his own player in warm-ups and got hurt. That's why he didn't even start the ball game. Closing in on five minutes left to play in the half. They try the right side. Iowa State defense again, right at the 25-yard line. Buck Calder is met again by Slot. Nebraska is trying to reestablish themselves now in running the power running game. And that's why you see so many pitches and you see so many handoff type plays up inside. Tough place to play for Iowa State. They've only won twice in Lincoln since World War II. And I think the only person to remember that, I think, maybe our director, Ken Faust, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Old the, the, the Nebraska, Nebraska grad. Nebraska grad and alum and <laughs> proud of his Cornhuskers. Timeout called. And a timeout's going to be called by Nebraska. We have 448 left to be played in the opening half. Nebraska hung 21 on John Skuldaney's defense in the first quarter. But they've been held in check since. 48 seconds of the first half, and the Nebraska faithful have kept the Iowa State faithful rather quiet. 21-0 is our score. 
Nebraska with the football facing third and five. Ball is on the 25-yard line. Two tight ends in the game now for Nebraska. Two wide receivers and one back. Tracy Wistrom, number 87, has been quiet so far this evening. Crouch into the flat. Davison complete. Good enough for the first down as he made the catch at the 18-yard line, was pushed back and thrown down rudely. Davison having a big night tonight. Came in with 12 catches in the ball game. Already has one touchdown catch. Has a couple catches tonight. Eric Weifer, number 49, goes up in the air to try to knock the pass down and just gets upended. He pays the price, but what he's doing is giving everything he's got for this Iowa State defense. And again, Nebraska knocking on the door, and they're eating up a lot of time doing it. Straight ahead with Dan Alexander. And that's second effort by a fullback Absolutely. there because he was stopped at the line of scrimmage but ended up getting a three-yard, four-yard gain just on sheer determination. The fullback position has been legendary mm -hmm. here at Nebraska. You think about the Tom Rathmans and the Joel McAvickas and the, 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 line, the, the list is endless. Dan Alexander moving from the eye back right. might be the next great fullback here. Well, five carries, 30 yards so far for Alexander, and Frank Solich let's see if he tries to pull something tricky out of his hat. There it is. Nuka on the reverse. Left side has the first down as he is upended at about the seven-yard line. And that was the reverse that we were talking about before with Bobby Newcomb coming back around. Watch Bobby right here. He's going to line up in the slot. He's going to come around. It's a fake up inside, and he gets a reverse and gets up the field. Frank Solich wants to use him more and more in these type of plays. We talked about it yesterday. They practice it a lot. You want to get the ball into your best athlete's hands. Well, the last two games, Nebraska has been perfect when they got inside the red zone. Now it's first and goal. Ball is on the seven-yard line. Straight ahead. Big hole. Does he get in? Touchdown on the second effort for Carell Buckalder. His fourth rushing touchdown of the year. And Frank Solich, the former running back coach, when Tom Osborne was head coach, likes that second effort by Buck Alder, the junior out of Collins, Nebraska. An old fashioned isolation blast play for Nebraska. But I, I'm like you, Ron. I, I think the determination by Buck Alder is what got the touchdown. The kick is good, and with 3.13 left in the half, Nebraska leads 28-0 on the other side of the break. We'll join Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow at our Fox Sports Saturday studios. Over Michigan, and how about Burks? He throws for 400 yards in the win. Guys? And Tom Brady from Michigan almost brought him back, but who would have thought that uh. Michigan State and Michigan would be throwing the football all over the lot? A huge, huge win for Nick Saban's Michigan State Spartans. Well, J.J. Moses will get his first chance at a return and a little trickery. He keeps the ball, fumbles. Iowa State falls on it on the 17-yard line. Got a little bit of a break there. I'll get all the football news, highlights, and analysis you can handle as we do in-depth pro, college, and even high school pigskin coverage. It's weeknights at 6 on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listing for Fox Sports Net football news. And their future Cornhuskers and future Cyclones that they talk about each and every week on that show is Sage Rosenfels comes back into the lineup. He has a big game mentality, and if he has it, he'd better show it now because they trail 28-0 with just over three minutes left in the half. Davis and Haywood in the backfield. The fake, a little shuttle pass to Haywood. Gets up to the 18-yard line. Maybe picked up a yard on the play. Kaiser on the stop. One of the hardest jobs in all of football is to cover kickoff. Randy Stella, number 34, the guy that blocked the punt before, runs down the field, gets off the blocker, causes a fumble on the spin, 
and Iowa State ends up recovering. But that is outstanding kickoff coverage by the linebacker, Randy Stella, number 34. How versatile is he, though? He's Hardy. real My versatile. Goodness. He can play any position on this field except the offensive defensive line. Well, George Darlington, one of the assistant coaches, told us Thursday night, he go, this kid could be very good. On second down and nine, Rosenfels doing what was successful against Kansas State. The pass is complete up to the 25, and that is rolling out, trying to buy some time. Chris Anthony with his fourth reception of the year. And, you know, we haven't seen as Austin Powers. You have about two and a half a <laughs> week. That's, that is honestly my, my costume. I, I hope those guys first. don't have dates tonight. They're probably with each other. <laughs> But you know, the, we saw against Kansas State that Rosenfels was able to roll out a little bit, and he used his tight end a lot. We haven't seen that being the case tonight. They haven't been successful with that. One of the problems, though, that they're having with the tight ends is they can't get down the field. Mm -hmm. The Nebraska safeties do a great job of coverage of inside receivers. They're just not open. It's an unbalanced line this time. Two blockers on the bottom. Third down and two. Davis stutter steps, gets the first down, and trips as he crosses the 30. Mike Brown got a hand on him, but there you saw just how elusive Darren Davis can be. Number three career rusher in Iowa State history. The thing I liked about him when, when you talk to him, and he's a very serious young man, and he was a wrestler in high school, which has really been an asset to him keeping his balance when he's running the football. Well, he had only 48 yards last year against the, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He has 23 tonight. Rosenfels out in the flat. The pass is complete to Damian Gross. Had an 80-yard touchdown Gross. reception versus Iowa a few weeks back. Capable of making a big play. The senior out of San Bernardino, California. And he, he idolizes Jerry Rice. That's his idol. In fact, he's got he's got a statue of Jerry Rice in his in his locker. You know, there's not much traffic out there. I think everybody no. is in the stadium here, Ron. How, how about the third largest city in Nebraska when there is a game here? And that 72,000 tonight is up to 77,743. Not bad, huh? Second down and four for the Cyclones, trying to do something the final 63 seconds, but they don't because the black shirts are there. Jason Lohr, the sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, with his first sack of the game and the first sack for the Huskers tonight. You're going to see Rosenfeld go back to pass, but you know what? These receivers are a little bit late getting off the line. Number 86, Chris Anthony, looks like he missed a snap count. He was right. not in sync with what the ball was when it was snapped. And I think that was one of the problems that Rosenfeld had. He didn't have anybody to throw to down the field. I think you're absolutely right. As Dan McCartney calls a timeout, and he's going to let his troops have it. You know, he was so excited, and obviously he knew the reality of the situation coming in here, but he knew that his team played Kansas State so well for 30 minutes, and we're hoping they do likewise. Well, Dan McCartney, like we talked about, has been around, and he knows what the situation is. Just a reminder, immediately following our first half of play, we'll send it over to Kellen Winslow and Kevin Frazier for the Nissan Halftime Report. The scores and highlights of all the games around the country, including that Michigan State upset over Michigan, the overtime thriller that was today. We had a bunch of great games today. Texas beating Oklahoma, setting up that showdown in two weeks with Nebraska down in Austin. Oklahoma suffering their second loss in a row. Dan McCartney hopes that's not the case for him. And of course, they had the off week last week. And ironically, four teams that Nebraska faces from the conference this year have off weeks prior to facing the Huskers. Didn't help Oklahoma State last week, and right now it's not helping, helping the Cyclones. Third down and 13, Rosenfels, little soft touch, lofting it up down the left sideline, and great coverage by Ralph Brown on the play. Ralph Brown takes the inside away that time. He does an excellent job on Moses. He sees the ball thrown, and he has recovery speed. That's why he's mm. going to be a first-round draft choice. We talked about him before at a Hacienda Heights, California, Bishop Ahmad High School. Hard to throw on this Nebraska secondary. Absolutely. 123 starts they have between their secondary right now. 123. It's a whole lot of experience. Ralph Brown has started every game in his career here in Nebraska. Gomez, a great spiraling high kick. At the 25-yard line. It is Walker trying the right side, and he runs out of room. 
Be pushed out at the 25, a 54 yard kick, 10 on the return, and you can see Iowa State only gave up one touchdown in the first half in the first four games this year. And you know what? As a football team, they outscored their opponents 79 to 7 in the first half. Well, that has changed a little bit tonight, as we've talked about. But you know, and, and it makes for a happy halftime, believe me. Oh, yeah. When you're ahead and you're all the time, and you've only given up seven points in, in four games. Dan McCartney's got an interesting job at halftime to motivate his troops to come out and to continue to play for 60 minutes, yep. as we talked about at the beginning of the game. You know, that, that's a tough halftime speech. Final 36 seconds. Hopping over the right side is Dan Alexander, coming back from a couple of knee surgeries. The coaches are so pleased in his comeback. His movement this past week much better in practice, and they can they said they can see his confidence continuing to build in that Ibex spot. And the Ibex spot this year already, you know, quite frankly, has been under criticism. Everybody's saying, well, that's not the, the typical Ibex at Nebraska, but they're getting the job done. Well, they've had some injuries. They've had some shuffling of personnel, and they were also, you know, undecided at the quarterback position. So I think once they settled at the quarterback, it helps the Ibex because then the option gets clicked. Alexander keeps the fake, has some speed. He turns on the afterburners. Final play of the half down to the 25-yard line. Eric Weifer, the linebacker on the stop, but that's the way the first half will end. Nebraska hangs 21 on Iowa State in the first quarter, seven only in the second quarter, and the Iowa State Cyclones are in a big hole. 28-0, Eric Clemens is with Frank Solich. All right, Coach, you know, you, uh, big turnover to stop their first drive and the big block punch seemed yeah. to set the tone. Your assessment of the first half? Well, I thought we came out and did uh, some good things very early, and certainly, uh, the momentum change that happened in the first quarter uh, was a big factor for us. Uh, we're doing some good things, but there's still a long ways to go. We got two quarters of uh, tough football yet to play. All right, Coach, good luck to Thank you in you. the second half. Time now for the Nissan Halftime Report. Let's send you to our College Football Saturday studios before I get run over by the band. Kevin Fraser and Kellen Winslow, take it away, guys. Eric, be safe. Get out of the way. We'll take over. Welcome to the Nissan Halftime Report.